This LOS is Compare, Calculate, and Interpret Yield Spread Measures. Yield Spreads A bond yield to maturity can be separated into a benchmark and a spread. Changes in benchmark rates capture macroeconomic factors that affect all bonds in the market – inflation, economic growth, foreign exchange rates, and monetary and fiscal policy. Changes in spreads typically capture microeconomic factors that affect the particular bond, credit risk, liquidity, and tax effects. Benchmark rates are usually yields to maturity on government bonds or fixed rates on interest rate swaps. Okay, continuing with the yield spreads, we're gonna look at the yield spreads over the benchmark rate. So here we start with the benchmark, which we call the risk-free rate of return. And what builds up that rate is the expected real rate plus the expected inflation rate, okay? On top of that, we're going to add the spread for various uh, different types of bonds. For example, let's say it's a corporate bond. What would be the spread on that bond versus the benchmark? So the spread is based on a risk premium, and that risk premium is made up of three items here, starting with the credit risk, plus the liquidity risk, plus the taxation. Add all those three together to give us the risk premium, and that creates a spread over the benchmark rate. So just do a quick little practice question, check our understanding. The spread component of a specific bond's yield to maturity is least likely impacted by changes in A, its tax status, B, its quality rating, or C, inflation in its currency of denomination. Okay, this uh, question is looking for the least likely, so we're looking for the false. So the, yield, the spread component of a bond's yield to maturity is uh, impacted by Tax status, well that's a true, there it is, taxation. Quality rating, that's a true, because that's the credit risk, credit risk and quality rating, okay? Sometimes uh, CFA, English test, subject uh, yield to maturity and bonds in this case. So we know if those two are true, then C has to be the false, and that is least likely. So the specific, uh, spread component of a specific bond's yield to maturity, least likely impacted by changes in inflation, in its concern, currency of denomination. So the spread component of a specific bond's yield to maturity, least likely impacted by uh, inflation of its currency of denomination, the effect of changes in macroeconomic factors, such as the expected rate of inflation in the currency of denomination is seen mostly in changes in the benchmark yield. Okay, that would show up in changes in the benchmark yield. The spread or risk premium component is impacted by microeconomic factors, specific to the bond and bond issuer including tax and quality and there it is it's the it's the quality credit risk liquidity and taxation continuing with yield spreads a g spread is the spread over or under a government bond rate and an i spread is the spread over or under an interest swap rate a g spread or an i spread can be based on a specific benchmark rate or on a rate interpolated from a benchmark yield curve. A Z spread, zero volatility spread, is based on the entire benchmark spot curve. It is the constant spread that is added to each spot rate such that the present value of the cash flows matches the price of the bond. An option adjusted spread, OAS, on a callable bond is the Z spread minus the theoretical value of the embedded call option. So let's do a practice question here. We have two bonds. We have a UK government benchmark bond. The coupon rate is 2%, time to maturity three years, and the price is 100.25. We have a UK corporate bond. Coupon rate is 5%, time to maturity is three years, and the price is 100.65. Both bonds pay interest annually. The three-year euro interest rate swap benchmark is 2.12%. The G spread in basis points on the UK corporate bond is closest to A, 264 basis points, B, 285 basis points, or C, 300 basis points. Okay, you're going to see that calculating this question is not too difficult at all. Step one, we're going to calculate the yield to maturity on the government benchmark bond. So they're giving us the price. And um, then we're gonna calculate the yield to maturity on the corporate bond and we're gonna compare the two 
because the G spread is the spread over or under a government bond rate, okay? So you can see here in the question, they've given us the current three year intra, uh, Euro interest swamp benchmark 2.12. We don't need that. We would need that if they asked for the I rate, okay? But they're not asking for the I rate, they're asking for the G rate, and a G spread is a spread over under a government uh, bond rate. So just gonna bring up the calculator here and we'll calculate the yields to maturity. So first thing, sec check second PY, make sure I've got it set for annual because it says that interest is paid annually. So you can see this is, um, you need to be fairly quick on your calculator keystrokes, but within 90 seconds, it shouldn't be too difficult. So 100.25 is our um, present value. That's our price. So I make that a negative. That's our present value. We've got a coupon rate of two. So that's two payment, 100 future value. Okay. And that's a three N and we're going to compute the IOI. That's all we're doing. Just computing IOI, 1.913457. 1.913457, okay? Then I'm gonna bring up the calculator again. I'm gonna clear it, and I'm gonna do the corporate bond now. So 100.65, make that a negative for my price, present value. And that's a five on the coupon payment, and 100 for the future value, of course, matures at par. That's also a three N and I'm gonna compute the IOI, and I've got 4.762376. 4.762376, okay? So just bringing up the calculator again, I can just hit the, the uh, plus or minus key, okay? And I'm just gonna subtract the 1.913457, and so you can see I have a difference of 2.8489, 2.8489, and so we know that's 285 basis points. So the correct answer is B, B is correct. The G spread is closest to 285 basis points. Just bring up the calculator, you can see that again, 2.84% is 285 basis points, okay? The benchmark rate for the UK fixed bond is the UK government benchmark bond. The euro interest rate spread is not uh, is um, used to calculate the um, for euro denominated corporate bonds, not UK bonds. Okay, and uh, so we'll do another practice question. Again, this one was not too difficult. Just calculating the yield to maturity on the government benchmark bond and the UK corporate bond, and uh, the spread putting in terms of percentages in terms of basis points. Okay, here's a quick little practice question. It should be easy. The yield spread of a specific bond over the standard swap rate in that currency of the same tenor is best described as the I spread, the Z spread, or the G spread. So this question shouldn't be too difficult because it was talking about the spread of a specific bond over the standard swap rate in that currency of the same tenor. That's the I spread. Remember the G spread is the question we just did is the spread under or over a government bond rate I spread is the spread over or under an interest rate swap, okay? The I spread or interpolated spread is the yield spread of a specific bond over the standard swap rate in that currency of the same tenor. The yield spread in basis points over an actual or interpolated uh, government bond is known as the G spread and the Z spread, the zero volatility spread is the constant spread such that is added to each spot rate such that the present value of each cash flow matches the price of the bond. So not too difficult when they're talking about standard swap rate, we're talking about the I spread. Another quick practice question, an option adjusted spread, OAS, on a callable bond is the Z spread A over the benchmark spot curve, B minus the standard swap rate in that currency of the same tenor, or C minus the value of the embedded call option expressed in basis points per year. Okay, that question shouldn't be too difficult. Again, it's just based on the definition, and we saw the definition on the previous slide, an option adjusted spread on a callable bond is the Z spread minus the theoretical value of the embedded call option, so C is correct. The option value in basis points per year is subtracted from the Z spread to calculate the option adjusted spread. The Z spread is the constant yield spread over the benchmark spot curve rate, the I spread is the yield spread of a specific bond over the standard swap rate in that currency of the same tenor. Okay, we're just going to finish this LOS with one last 
practice question that I'm taking from the ebook from the back of the chapter reading uh, problems. So a corporate bond offers a 5% coupon, has exactly three years remaining to maturity. Interest is paid annually. The following rates are from the benchmark spot curve. So we've got time to maturity one year, spot rate 4.86%, time to maturity two years, spot rate 4.95%, and time to maturity three years, spot rate 5.65%. So the bond is currently trading at a Z spread of 234 basis points. The value of the bond is closest to A, 92.38, B, 98.35, or C, 106.56. Okay, I want to finish with this question because actually it's quite easy, okay? So what did they give us? They gave us the uh, bond is annual, a coupon, five, and the uh, for three years. And they gave us the spot rates of 4.86% for year one, 4.95% for year two, and 5.65% for year three. So we know how to calculate the price of the bond using the spot rates. All we do is we discount the coupon values and the face value in that last coupon by the spot rates. But in this case, it's asking, it's giving us a Z spread. So remember the Z spread is a constant yield spread over the benchmark spot curve. So this question becomes fairly easily. You can see that in the uh, denominator for year one, we're gonna add that 0.0234 to the uh, treasury spot rate of 4.86%. And we're gonna, and it's a constant uh, yield spread. So we're gonna add that in year two to the treasury spot rate of 4.95% and we're going to add it to the year three treasury spot rate of 5.65% and so then it just becomes a very easy calculation of uh, doing the present value of coupon payment one, present value of coupon payment two, and present value of coupon payment three plus the face value. Again, a few calculator keystrokes that you need to do in 90 seconds but not impossible and in this case just add, it was talking about the Z spread just adding that to the treasury spot rate and then simply calculating the price of a bond from the spot curve. So not too difficult. And that's the last for this LOS. Thank you.